Aum. Evam nirantara bhyastha brahmai vasmiti vasana aratya vidya vikshepan rogani varasayanam Evam, therefore, nirantara abhyastha practiced constantly. Brahmai vasmi, I am Brahman. Iti, thus, vasana, impressions, harati, destroys, vidya vikshepan, avidya, ignorance and agitation, rogan, disease, iva, like, rasayanam, a type of Ayurvedic medicine. Therefore, the impression of I am Brahman, reinforced by constant practice, destroys ignorance and the mental agitation caused by it, just as Ayurvedic medicine like Rasayanam destroys disease. Namaste. Well, so far in this series, we've been going over the theory of enlightenment. But then, with the Bhuta Shuddhi prayer, or meditation, we come to the actual means, how to become enlightened. And it's very simple. You simply have to repeat the thought or the impression, I am Brahman, in enough different ways and enough different times that when you enter into sushupti at the time of death or before, like every night when you go to sleep, you are bringing enough of this impression with you that on the other side, it creates the being of I am Brahman. This is the key. This is the practice. This is how you do it. Huh? to immerse oneself, just like learning a foreign language. What's the best way to learn French? Go and live in France or Spain. I did this. I lived in Mexico, in Mexico City, and in the country in Mexico, and then in Chile. And then later on, I lived in Spain. I never studied Spanish at all, but I picked up enough to have a quite intelligent conversation in Spanish, just by so-called osmosis. <laughs> well, it's actually called immersion. What it means is you hear nothing but people talking Spanish, then you're going to pick up Spanish because it becomes obvious from contextual clues what they're talking about and from the tone of voice how they feel about it, and so on. So you can learn a foreign language like this. That means you can learn pretty much anything like this. Might be a little slower than formal study, but it works. So how do you immerse yourself in thoughts of Brahman? Well, the first thing is you have to drop all other work except maybe taking care of yourself. If you live alone like I do, you have to cook, you have to engage a cleaner, you know, you, you have to do so many things to arrange the facilities nicely so you can take care of yourself with the minimal effort. That's like easy, huh? Anybody could do that. But what's more difficult and what very few people can do is to immerse yourself constantly in thoughts of Brahman, either from the external objective point of view that Brahman should be realized, or from the internal subjective point of view, I am Brahman. This is the key. This is the method, the means of enlightenment to simply reinforce this vasana. What is a vasana? It is a collection of similar mental impressions 
that cause a change in our sense of being, who we are, what we are, and how we look at the world. So vasanas can be cultivated. Just like in ordinary life, mostly we are the target of vasanas, huh? like memes. When you see a video on YouTube or on television, what is it telling you? Buy this, do that, be like this, go here, you know? They're telling you, making all these impressions in your mind. So you just use the same process, but adapt it to realization of Brahman. Always read the scriptures, especially the Upanishads. Use a mantra. You know, Om Namah Shivaya is a very good mantra. And that automatically leads to understanding of Brahman because Shiva is Brahman. He is the personality or the manifestation of Brahman within the material world. So by worshiping Shiva, one comes very close to Brahman and eventually realizes Brahman by Shiva's grace. That's why we always end these videos with Om Namah Shivaya. Another way is to repeat this Bhuta Shuddhi prayer. Repeat it until you become automatic at it. Huh? And just the thought, I am Brahman, expressed in any way or form, leads one towards realization. And that realization can be very subtle. You know, it's not like you're going to hear trumpets and see angels descending from heaven announcing your enlightenment. <laughs> it's something that is very quiet and happens deep within the mind. One's point of view changes. Instead of looking at oneself as a body or as a mind or a personality or an individual, one looks at oneself as Brahman. I am consciousness. I am pure consciousness without an object, aware only of myself and my awareness. Now, when one conceives of one's identity in that way, how can we not achieve realization? How can we not know ourselves to be only Brahman and nothing else? So this is called the ontic conversation. And we've mentioned this a few times in this channel. The ontic conversation is the conversation with oneself about what is, and especially about who am I. Antas comes from the Greek word ontos, which means what is, what exists, what is being, what is existence itself. And this conversation has to go on to determine the epistemology of knowledge, the source of knowledge. How do we get knowledge? Ultimately, through consciousness. And what are we? Ultimately, nothing but consciousness. What kind of consciousness? Unconditioned consciousness. Conditioned consciousness are the three states of Jagrat, Svapna, and Sushupti, where one experiences consciousness in the context of, I am an individual, I am this body, these senses, I am this world. Unconditioned consciousness is Turiya, the consciousness that I am conscious of myself, first of all, as consciousness. And I am also conscious of the consciousness that reveals the world, but that's secondary. See, this is epistemology. How do we get our knowledge? And of what quality is that knowledge? Conditioned knowledge 
is always temporary. So the objects of the senses that are perceived through the organs of the body are all temporary and changeable. Well, the states of consciousness themselves change. Every night when we go to sleep, we go from Jagrat to Swapna, from Swapna to Sushupti and back again. So if the states of consciousness, of conditioned consciousness, are themselves changeable, what to speak of their objects? Those objects are always impermanent, always disappointing, never satisfactory. The only satisfactory consciousness is Turiya. Because in Turiya, the only object is consciousness itself. So this is enlightenment. And how does this happen? By reinforcing the constant repetition of the thought, I am Brahman. I am Turiya. I am without qualities. I am universal. I am in all. I am everywhere, etc., etc., etc. So this is the conversation begun by the spiritual master when the disciple approaches and asks the question, who am I? What am I? How can I reach moksha? And we're going over that in our other series on the Vakya Vritti. So this conversation, the ontic conversation, or the conversation with the spiritual master about enlightenment, is the conversation that leads to enlightenment by constantly immersing one's mind and intelligence in conversations, topics about Brahman. And you can do this yourself by simply giving up all other activities and concentrating on reading, chanting, and hearing about Brahman 24 hours a day. I play my own recordings of my own readings of the scripture just to stay in the thought of Brahman when I'm doing ordinary things like cooking, cleaning, etc. Now, you might say, oh, I can't just give up everything. Huh? Uh, I can't afford to live if I don't work, for example. That means you messed up. That means you did not perform karma yoga adequately. Karma yoga is the very first stage of self-realization in Jagrat consciousness when one performs religious rituals according to the descriptions in the scriptures. And this leads to prosperity, freedom, autonomy in the world, that one has sufficient resources, one is blessed with sufficient opulence, that one does not have to work, one does not have to run here and there, one does not come under the authority of other people. So this is a blessing, and it's due to a perfect or at least competent performance of karma yoga. Now, this doesn't manifest overnight. It takes years. It can take decades. But most people today don't understand this, and so they don't do karma yoga. They avoid it like anything. And as a result, they have to work their whole lives. And this is tragic because it doesn't leave them sufficient time to become completely immersed in topics of Brahman and self-realization, leading to the attainment of complete enlightenment. Aung Tatsat. Aung Shakti Aung. Aung Namah Shivaya. <laughs>